are you wondering if podcasts are appropriate for you? Now, I'm not saying you should host a podcast, which you're more than welcome to give that a shot, but what if you could be able to leverage somebody else's podcast to get yourself in front of their audience and potentially, well, sell more books? Because obviously the point of marketing and promotion is to become more visible. And so that's why podcasts are a really great solution to some of your marketing needs. So that's why I brought in today's guest, Maddie Dalrymple. Now you might know Maddie from previous interviews on this channel here. Really love me some Maddie. She is the host of the Indie Author Podcast and someone who's very highly respected within the Indie Author community. In fact, she's actually interviewed over 200 guests within the Indie Author community, some real big names. I've actually been on her podcast a couple of times too. So without any further ado, let's dive into the world of podcast interviews and being a guest on podcasts and some of the best tips for etiquette and landing some great podcast interviews with Maddie Dalrymple. And uh, without any further ado, let's just get on into it before I talk even more. Maddie, it has been a gosh. How many times have you been on this podcast so far? What, three, four? Yeah, something like that. We've been exchanging <laughs> podcast appearances. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've been more more than generous with having me over on the Indie Author Podcast a number of times. I think I'm in the gold jacket club by now. Yes, yes. You're right in the top tier of uh, maybe four, four or five, maybe so far. I've had That's a couple okay, other so. small segments, too, as well, like little, yes, little tiny yeah. segments. Yep. But um, I, I want to kind of take a backtrack here because it's so funny that, oh, gosh, I think you and I met what, a couple of years ago. And at that time, you were really ramping things up for the Indie Author podcast, your own podcast. Now, you've already surpassed over 200 different guests being interviewed. So what has that what has that been like? I mean, it sounds like you've just been hustling your face off. Yeah, well, um for a long time I started the podcast in uh 2016, but it was very sporadic. I was still working at my uh day job and I was basically just using it as an excuse to um interview people in my local writers group about things that they knew about that I wanted to learn about. And so whenever I had an opportunity, I would interview someone, put a put a podcast episode up. And then when I left my corporate job in uh, 2019, I went on a more regular schedule biweekly. And then in 2020, I went uh, weekly. Um, so I've been interviewing people weekly since then. And um, yeah, I always like to joke that everybody can tell what I'm struggling with at the moment because that's who I'm talking to. If I'm uh, wrestling with uh, plot structure, I invite someone who knows about plot structure. If I'm wrestling with uh, website presence. I invite someone who knows about website presence. So yeah, it has been super fun to have that excuse to talk to people. This is something I try to tell people on a regular basis and they just don't listen to me. I, I learned this from Mark Guberti a number of years ago. Nice young man. You should have him on your podcast one of these times. Mark was just like, when he started a podcast, he literally interviewed people that were experts at podcasting because he wanted to learn how to do podcasts. And then he grew from there and started bringing other experts. And it's just one of the best ways to get free education and free coaching without having to pay the bill, you know, having to pay this, you know, hefty bill. Cause let's face it. Some of these experts are probably charging hundreds, if not thousands per hour, just to sit down and consult with them. Yeah. You're not having to pay anything for these guests, right? Exactly. I'm just paying them back with my time and the uh, effort to help spread their word and for them to help spread my word. And so, yeah, it's just the the collegial environment of uh, authors, I think, you know, that you can find that kind of support that I don't think you can find in any other industry or profession. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really uh, and, and, and I, I have to admit, I, I do it myself. I'll bring in other people that I want to learn from. Um, for instance, you, you've already interviewed so many people, and I think that I can learn something from your whole process. So let's take a step back, and I would love to just talk with you about some of these guests that it's a veritable all-star panel of just amazing people. And I know it's going to be hard for you to pick and choose. So I'm just going to start it off because I've heard a couple of your podcasts, and I do know mutual friend of ours, Mark Leslie Lefebvre, has been oh, a... Yeah multi-time guests. So yeah. could you share with me some highlights in working with Mark? Any insights that you might have picked up from him in the times that he's appeared on your podcast? Well, he was featured on Landmark episode 200. I have like a note to myself that every time I hit a century mark in the uh, 
in the podcast um, backlist, I'm going to invite Mark to be on it because we made that be landmark episode 200. But um, yeah, I met uh, Mark first, not through my podcast, but through his podcast, the Stark Reflections podcast. Great podcast. Um, yes, it is. And it's very different. I mean, we were talking a little bit before we started recording about kind of the different personalities of uh, the people who do podcasts or do interviews. And um, I always appreciate that Mark has such a, a thoughtful, um, contemplative, reflective, one might say, um, approach to and, and very positive and very encouraging. Um, but he was doing a bit, this was years ago on um, short fiction. He had kind of mentioned short fiction in passing on his podcast. And I wrote him a note as a patron of his podcast. And I said, oh, you know, I think I would love it to hear a whole episode about short fiction, which he then did because he's that kind of guy. And then I got in touch with him again. I said, you know, I think there's like the basis of a book here. So I ended up uh, co-authoring, um, taking the short tech, reading income and connecting with readers using short fiction with Mark. Um, so I think just another great example of how, you know, you, you reach out to this generous community of fellow authors and you know, you can find people to work with, to help you, to support you, to teach you. Um, but yeah, Mark has been on a number of times. I think one of my favorite ones was when he came on to talk about um, the, uh, I think it was the planes, trains, and automobiles. Um, oh yeah, one of his favorites next to Die Hard. Canadian Mounted. <laughs> um, Canadian Mounted. I said, That's okay, it. Yes, because it was, it was like a trivia book. Yeah. Yes. You know? I did not know about the backstory of Canadian Mounted, and I started seeing posts on <laughs> social media about this, and I'm like, whoa, Mark, like, what direction are you going in here? What's going on here, buddy? <laughs> I was reading porn, and I was like, oh, I wasn't sure. Um, but yes, he has been a, a super fun guest to have on. That's that's really cool. And, and Mark, for anybody that is unaware, Mark Leslie Lefebvre is the founder of Kobo Writing Life, and he's also a consultant for Drafted Digital right now. The guy's a legend. Yeah. He's been in the business of self-publishing since the early 90s. So he's just, just stellar. Uh, I've had him here as yeah. a guest before. But let's go ahead and, and let's transition over to some of your favorite guests. And I want to talk about why they're your favorite guests. So I'm going to ask you a very popular question. I see a lot of YouTubers asking this interview question. What would be your Mount Rushmore, your four favorite guests that you've had on your podcast? And why, why did you enjoy them that much? I'm putting you on the spot. I know. <laughs> um, well, Mark would certainly be one of them. I'm going to count, count that as one um, okay. because um, he's just always, he has, always has such great things to share. And I always leave those conversations feeling very inspired. Um, and so uh, that would be one. I would say another person on the uh, nonfiction front would be Michael Laron. Michael has been, uh, it's also in the gold star level. Uh, Michael has been on the podcast a number of times. And we have this sort of unofficial series called Two Perspectives On. And so we'll pick a topic that we know we have some point different we're, we're coming at it with different perspectives so yeah. um i'm not sure this is i think this is one that's still on the tickler list but um michael is a a monster of productivity and so yeah. um you know talking about how how he has developed a a practice that he feels comfortable with uh, you know good about from a business point of view and a creative point of view and how that's different than mine uh mm -hmm. we've talked about tools we use um this was interesting i think you'll appreciate this because uh Michael, as I as I think you are, are is definitely a, like a sort of sampling the the range of tools that are available to authors. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm much more, I have like a small core group of tools, and then I try to to, to um, plumb them for everything they're worth. So I kind of go narrow but deep, and he likes to go broad and and understand a wider range. Um, but uh, that's always super fun because um, he just has so much experience and so much um logic behind the the decisions he's making we just did a great um, conversation about branding which was really fun and um then we were able to parlay that into last year we taught um a, a workshop at the writer's digest conference on it was a day-long workshop on um indie publishing and that was super fun because we did bring different but compatible perspectives to the whole indie publishing world and we were talking to people who really weren't familiar at all with what indie publishing offered. So um, that has been super fun. I think on the fiction front, the two um, the two examples I'll bring up, I'm just gonna mute myself for one second. I'm just talking about how I'm getting over something. Um, 
so one of my fangirl interviews has been was uh, Ben Winters, who's the okay. author of the Last Policeman series, um, Underground Airlines, uh, Golden State. He's one of my favorite authors. And um, he was on a book tour, a virtual book tour, and I, I attended one of his uh, events where then they solicited questions from the audience. And I asked a question. He said, oh, that's a good question. Um, and um, answered the question in a very lovely and charming way. And then afterwards, I got in touch with him. And I said, I'm the person who asked that question. And I would love to spend like 40 minutes talking with you about your answer to that question. And it was basically how I admired that um, the, the name of the episode is the, the bothness of compelling characters and how um, you don't want characters to be, uh, you know, good or evil. You want the good characters to have some significant flaws and you want the bad characters to have some appealing things too. So yeah. the reader feels some empathy. Uh, so that was a super fun conversation. And then I'd say that my fourth uh, pick is another kind of fangirl um, interview. And that was with uh, Doug Dorst, who co-wrote a book with J.J. Abrams called S., and um, it is a book, it's a fascinating, fascinating book. It's, it comes in a, um, I, I talk about it so much, I should have a copy at my desk, but um, it looks like a 1950s hardcover book with like the embossed cover in a slip case. And then you, you take it out and open it up and it has like a, a library, like library identification on the spine and on the inside, there's like checkout list. And then you start paging through it and you see that there's writing in the margins. And basically there are several simultaneous stories going on. There's the story in the book, the, the book in the slipcase is called the ship of Theseus. Then there's the, these handwritten looking, very realistically handwritten looking notes in the margins that are uh, two students who are using the book to write notes. Like they take the library book out, they write a note, they put it back in and that story. And then there's the third story that's uh, the footnotes of the ship of Theseus, which are ostensibly written by the translator of the book. Um, and it's just, it's just fascinating. And you also find like postcards and um, there, my favorite is a map that's drawn on a napkin. It is so fantastic. It's so tactile and so physical and so uh, enthralling in the way it's presented. So yeah. um, I got in touch with Doug and I said, I would love to talk to you about how this came about. And that was a super fun conversation too. Interesting. So you, you have these four guests and obviously hundreds of more. So it's really hard to kind of say any one person was just the best of all time. But when you're you're selecting your guests, what's the criteria that you're looking to beyond just like, I want to learn something from them because I know I've met many experts before and though they're fantastic people, they are sometimes not the greatest of guests. I'm not going to name any names and none of them have appeared on my podcast before. So what, what's that criteria like for you? Well, I definitely favor people that I've seen present. So I draw a lot of my guests from writers conferences that I've been to. Um, if it's somebody that I haven't had an opportunity to see present, you can also often find people's, uh, you know, their presence on video or on audio and just making sure they're, they're comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think that a key is someone who has studied a topic deeply and has experience explaining it to other people. So people who have a demonstrated expertise in explaining how to structure a story or explaining how you can most effectively use an email newsletter, or explaining, you know, how different uh, why platforms work or whatever, um, so that they're not fumbling for that uh, when, when they're speaking, but also they're speaking to it in a conversational way that you're not getting kind of a rote recitation of facts that they've obviously said over and over again. Um, yeah. And that they're enthusiastic about being on the podcast, you know, that um, I've started deprioritizing pitches that I get from publicists because I find that um, maybe the publicist doesn't always explain to the guest what podcasts they're going to be on. And then they show up and they're not quite sure what the deal was. And they're like, who are you? And um, so uh, personal uh, personal pitches from people or people that can connect personally with my audience. So I think that the personal aspect is kind of a, a common theme there. If someone were to reach out to you, um, and I, I would say not just you, 
even podcast hosts, what's the best way to approach it? Because obviously you mentioned it's like sometimes the publicist thing, there's a little bit of a separation there. And so it's, yeah. it's not so customized or personalized for you. Whereas another author could probably reach out to you. Let's just say me, I reach out to you and I want to get on your podcast. What's the best way to approach that? Uh, do I contact you through a website? If so, what's that communication going to be like? Because I want to be able to land in someone's email inbox and potentially land an interview on your podcast. Yeah, well, I think that the, the personal aspect continues because um, if I get a pitch, well, first of all, I'm sure you can sympathize. If you get a pitch that's like, dear name, and they forgot to replace name <laughs> with your name, or they call, they, they're they pitching the wrong podcast. I once got pitched for, I love your podcast, The Career Author. I was like, I love The Career Author too, but it's not my podcast. Um, so that's bad. <laughs> that happened to me before. <laughs> yes. Somebody pitched me on Sonny Linarduzzi's like, podcast, and I'm like, I don't, I don't even know Sunny. She seems fantastic, but that, that's, I yeah. can't book you there. <laughs> I'm flattered that you got us confused, but really like double check your email before you send it. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that the two things that are really attractive to me in a pitch are a demonstration that they understand, know and understand the podcast um, and an indication that they care about sharing something valuable with my listeners. And so a pitch that is uh, a pitch that says, Oh, you know, love your podcast. I just listened to the episode with so-and-so. And I especially like your comment about such and such um, is going to go a lot further than um, I think that you would like my client Fred for your podcast. Mm -hmm. And then sharing information, not about what's in it for them. Like I have a new book and I want to tell people about it, but instead emphasizing what's in it for, for my guests. So if your guests were interested in the episode where you talked about such and such with so-and-so, I think a great companion piece would be this, which would expand on this one part of your previous episode. So uh, making it personal and making it not about them, making it about the listeners, um, because that's the that's the group that we're both trying to serve, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. It's so important that we do get that to align with listeners. Now, when you're communicating things, when is it too little? And when is it too much? Because I know that I get slammed with a lot of requests for interviews and a lot of time it just gets thrown out because, well, I'm just going to be honest with you. Sometimes they're sending me like an entire dissertation on why they should appear on my podcast. And I'm like, I don't have time to read that. Bye. See ya. So what's too short? What's too long? And what can we expect to kind of send in that communication? Obviously, we've kind of discussed some of those bullet points being what kind of value can you bring to the table? Yeah, I think links are your friend. So uh, one of the rules is don't make the host go look for anything. Um, and so if uh, if the person says, um, hi, I'm I'm so and so and I'm a big fan of your podcast. I just, you know, I appreciated the recent episode, just like I said. So maybe that's one sentence. Um, I just did this. Maybe that's the second sentence. I just um, published a book about email marketing or um, I just uh, developed a class about um, how to structure a story. Um, you can see some examples of me talking about it here and here. And um, I think it would it would be a value to your uh, listeners because of such and such. Um, you can see more information at my social media links below, you know, looking forward to to um, talking with you further. So the whole thing's maybe four or five, six sentences long and all the links are there so I can go um, uh, go find the information without having to poke around myself. The more work you can take off the hands of the, uh, off, the off the plate of the host, the better. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the stories that I like to share is uh, a guest who was pitching me for the podcast. He uh, was a new author. He had, did not have any, this would have would be his first interview. And um, so he didn't really have anything to point me to, but he recorded a video specifically for me um, oh, nice. saying, you know, hi, Maddie, I'm really interested in being on, on your podcast. You know, here's just like a, one minute of me talking about my topic. And I thought this is fantastic because not only does he demonstrate that it's for me, you know, very personalized, very targeted. Uh, he's and he's gone to the trouble of recording this video to illustrate his comfort on camera, his comfort behind a microphone. Um, and he got a, you know, he got a slot, he got a show. So, um, nice. the experience, experience is great, but it's not necessary in order to present yourself in a professional and appealing way to a podcast host. I love this. This is great information. As we start to wrap things up, there's definitely a, a point to us kind of connecting here. And 
when you had informed me about your latest offering, I was like, oh, I've got to have you over on the podcast. So share with me your latest course offering that you're, you're doing for podcast guesting. Is that the way I want to say it? <laughs> yes, it is. It is called uh, Pod Pro Author Coaching, and I'm applying my 200 plus um, episodes worth of uh, experience as an interviewer on the Indie Author Podcast, and also my experience on dozens of other interviews as an interviewee. And um, I actually recently started a, a video series called What I Learned. And as you know, I ask authors two questions related to their latest book. What did they learn that they would like to share with their fellow writers? And what did they learn that they would like to share with their fellow readers? And um, I got some, that is one that I entertain pitches from publicists for. And I got a couple of guests that were sent to me by uh, publicists and they were very nervous at the beginning they were like oh this is you know the first time i've done this I, i'm not quite sure what to expect and then at the end they were they were happy and comfortable and i realized that that entree into being behind the mic being being in front of the camera is can be really intimidating on top of everything else that a newer author is trying to deal with in terms of getting word out and so um I wanted to combine all that experience with the fact that in my corporate life, I also, um, I facilitated, I'll call it a new employee orientation. And as part of that, I would often coach executives to come into the, those uh, sessions and tell stories. Um, they would tell stories about their own experience and how they applied the um, principles that, that the attendees would learn. Um, so I have that coaching experience as well. And so it is a, um, a two-part coaching offering. I do one session where I interview the client in the same way I interviewed you about those two questions about what they learned. Yeah. And then we have a follow-up. I then produce a, a video that they can share on their own social media in whatever way they would like based oh, on that nice. interview. And then we have a follow-up where uh, I would go over, you know, what did they do that was great that they should make sure to continue doing and what are the areas where they can improve so that it can be even better in sharing their story uh, connecting with the audience and also connecting with the hosts, because I think that oftentimes the connections and the benefits you can gain from building a relationship with a host, as you and I have proved, is just as valuable as the connections that you can yeah. um, gain by having that connection with the audience. So uh, all those things are wrapped up in the Pod Pro Author Coaching Service, and people can find out more about that at theindieauthor.com, and it's indie with a Y, I-N-D-Y. TheIndieAuthor.com, and it is under the Services tab. 